In this video we're going to look at calculating resultant forces from a range of forces acting on objects. So here's our first question. It says what is the resultant force acting on this car? And there's two things we need to look at. The forward force on this car is 1000 newtons. There's also a backwards force acting on the car of 500 newtons. The resultant force means the overall force. So if we take all the forces into account, what's the result? What's going to be the overall impact on the car? The overall impact on the car is going to be a forward force, because the forward force is larger than the backward force, of 500 newtons. These 500 newtons here effectively cancel out 500 newtons from this 1000. So if you do 1000, take away 500 these are 500 newtons, the forward force is bigger, so my resultant force would be 500 newtons in the forwards direction. Okay, here's a second question for us to have a look at. Um, in this instance we've got two forces acting in the backwards direction and one force acting in the forwards direction. Our force acting in the forwards direction is 600 newtons. We know that because we've got two forces acting in the backwards direction. We need to add them together. So we're going to do 500 plus 10. That works out as 510 newtons in the backwards direction. My forward force, this 600 newton force going forward, is larger. So the direction of my resultant force will be forwards and the size of that force will be 600 take away 510 newtons to give me 90 newtons going forwards. And that's my resultant force there. Okay, here are four questions for you to have a go at. What I'd like you to do is pause the video have a go at the questions and then I will talk through the answers. Okay then, we'll start to have a look through some answers. We are going to start off by looking at this one here. Okay, our forward force is 100 newtons, that's fairly straightforward. Our force acting in the opposite direction backwards is split into two, so we're going to need to add those two forces together. 550 plus 10 works out as 560 newtons backwards. 100 newtons forwards. The backwards force is larger, so the direction of my force will be backwards. The size of that force will be 560 take away the 100, so it'll be 460 newtons going backwards. Okay, we're going to have a look at the next one along this one here. Um, this is a fairly straightforward one. We've got two forces one forwards, one backwards. The forwards force, 1000 newtons, is bigger. So that will tell me my direction, and the size of that force will be 990 newtons, taking the 10 newtons away from the 1,000 newtons. The third question we'll have a look at is this one down here. Slightly more complicated. We've got two forces in the backwards direction, so we need to add those together. So they'll total 60 newtons going that way. The forward force is 600 newtons going forwards. I'm going forwards is larger, that tells me the direction. The size of that force will be the 600, take away the 60 newtons to give me 540 newtons going forwards. Fourth question then. This one is slightly more complicated still. You've got an upwards force and a downwards force. Because the upwards force of 500 newtons and the downwards force of 500 newtons are the same size, these two forces are balanced. There's no resultant force upwards or downwards. So we can almost ignore those two forces, leave them to one side. We can then concentrate on the other forces. Backwards direction, we've got 550 newtons and 10 newtons. We need to add those together to get 560 newtons going backwards. We've got 100 newtons going forwards. 560 backwards is larger, that tells me the direction. I then need to work out how much bigger the backwards direction is than the forwards. That works out at 460 newtons backwards. I've done 560 newtons, take away the 100 to give me 460 newtons. Okay. 
Okay, then following on from that previous question about working out resultant forces, this question says which cars will be accelerating? Accelerating, remember, means getting faster. Which cars will be decelerating? Have a think about this, and then I'll talk through some answers in a second. Okay, then we'll talk through these answers and work out whether these cars are going to be getting faster or whether they're going to be getting slower. First thing we need to work out is which direction the resultant force is in. So for this first car, we worked out in the previous question, the resultant force is going backwards. The resultant force is going backwards, that means the car is going to be decelerating, it's going to be getting slower. Okay, second question, resultant force is going forwards. It's a force pushing the car forward, it's going to be gaining speed, that means it's going to be accelerating. Okay, third question, resultant force is going forwards, that means it's going to be accelerating. Fourth question, resultant force is in this direction, force opposing its motion, that one will be decelerating, getting slower. So we'll just have a quick look at why that's the case then. Um, we've got a rocket on the screen there. It's got an upwards force generated by the, the reaction when the fuel's pushed out, and then two forces going downwards. One force going downwards will be gravity, the second will be air resistance. The rocket has a larger force going upwards. That means it's going to start to increase its speed in the upwards direction. It's going to be accelerating, getting faster. If the forces were balanced, if the forces were the same size on that rocket, it would mean that there is going to be no change in speed. The rocket will stay at the same speed. It could be that the rocket's moving and the forces are balanced, so it would stay at whatever speed it's at, or it could mean that it's stationary. What resultant forces don't mean is they don't tell you what direction an object's moving in. So this um, rocket here on the left doesn't mean that the rocket's going upwards necessarily, it means it's accelerating in that direction. It's really important we use these terms, acceleration and constant speed, when we talk about resultant forces. If there is a resultant force, it means we've got acceleration occurring. If there's no resultant force, it means we've got a constant speed.